Welcome to We Don't Have Cookies with your host, Jason Marshall. Hey, everybody. Thanks for downloading the show. It's going to be a solo show today, but I have a lot to talk about and we're going to have some fun. St. Patrick's Day was last Sunday, and I wanted to have former guest and Irish comedian Frank Cronin on this episode that was supposed to come out the day after St. Patrick's Day, but he's in France right now doing stand-up at some really great venues. I saw a picture of one, and it's a theater with floor-level seating and four upper tiers. It looks amazing. So he's off living a great life right now, but he will be back on the podcast once he gets back in the U.S., But I do have one Irishman on the show today. Here is listener Chris Doyle's Fun Fact Factory segment that I promised from last week. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Fun Fact Factory. This week's topic, due to Jason's neighbor watch, is Christmas lights. Did you guys know Japan doesn't celebrate Christmas, but it is big on Christmas light installations? Christmas is not a national holiday in Japan, but since the 1960s, they do celebrate Christmas in the commercial way, making it a multi-million dollar industry every year. So Jason, have you considered your neighbor may actually be Japanese? Sorry about the late show. I have had a lot going on lately. I've been working on Elena's podcast, and I've been doing a lot of home improvement projects and redecorating around the house. I got a lot of painting done last week and a lot of other stuff. My house is a complete wreck right now. (laughs) I still have a lot more to do, but it's better to be busy than to be bored, and having too much time on your hands just leads to trouble. And once I finish this up, it's going to look a lot better. I'm also planning a huge landscaping project for the spring and summer. I'm going to be planting over 80 trees in the yard along with a lot of plants and stuff. I'm going to have a ton of work to do, but I'm really looking forward to it. I won't talk about the entire project, but I will say that I am planting some privacy trees across from my neighbor, which brings us to neighbor news. This week in neighbor news, my neighbor started tearing down the old house on his property I think I talked about it briefly on the first installment of Neighbor News, but just in case you missed it, he has an old house that's falling in on itself, and it's between his house and mine, and one of the people in the neighborhood complained to the county, and the county told him that he had to tear it down. My neighbor would always say something to me about tearing the house down every time he would talk to me, and I just never understood why. Then, once one of my neighbors told me that another neighbor turned him in, I think he thinks that I'm the one who called the county, but it wasn't me, and I actually talked to the person who turned him in, and I very rarely ever talked to this guy, so when he was telling me the complaint that he sent in or called in or whatever, he also mentioned that he said he thought it was hazardous to children in the neighborhood, And I thought, oh, maybe that's why he thinks it was me. But anyway, uh, (laughs) I did find out who it was. And I actually thought about going over and telling him, like, hey, man, I know you probably think it was me. I just found out someone turned you in. It wasn't me. I'm not going to say who it was, but it definitely wasn't me. But I kind of think it's funny that he doesn't know and has no clue how much the people around here don't like him because everybody's so polite when they talk to him. So I'm not even going to bother letting him know that it's actually somebody else out to get him. (laughs) It's not me. (laughs) So everybody out here really is nice, though. One of the people who's been complaining about him drove by and saw he was tearing it down with a group of other people, because God forbid he does anything by himself. And they were honking and waving. (laughs) So I thought that was funny. I thought, you hate this guy. But you're driving down the street pretending you're friends. It's funny that he has no clue how many people dislike him. But uh, anyway, I'm kind of sad to see the house go down because it's been there ever since I was a kid. To be honest, I'm going to kind of miss it. It's a sort of a piece of my childhood. It's, like I said, something that's always been around since I was a kid. So it's kind of sad to see it go. And because it's between his house and my house, 
it added a lot of privacy, or at least it felt like it did. When I'd look out my window, I didn't see his house. I saw the other one. So, I don't know. I'm going to miss it. Oh, and before I end neighbor news, he only turns his Christmas lights on his porch once or twice a week now. So, I guess that's a start. <laughs> I don't know if that may... Actually, I think that makes him seem more crazy. That It's only a couple of times a week. It's not every day. So, the man is officially psychotic. <laughs> One of the other things that's kept me busy lately is working with Elaine on her podcast. Like I said before, I'm really proud of her. Her last episode was number three on Apple Podcasts right under Joe Rogan. And it also was the subject of an article on Entertainment Tonight's website. I wasn't sure if the episode was actually mentioned on the TV show because I don't, I don't watch the TV show, but somebody sent me a link to the article and I wasn't mentioned in any of the, uh, any of the article, but it felt good to see those things happen and to know that I was a part of it behind the scenes. And it's really a surreal feeling to be working with somebody that you watched on TV and then have them calling and texting you. But speaking of TV, there's a commercial here in the United States for hotwire.com. The commercial ends with a jingle that goes H O T W I R E hotwire.com. Well, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> when I'm around other people, I like to sing the jingle under my breath. Like I'm just singing it to myself, but I do it loud enough for them to hear me, but I change it up. And my version goes H O T W I R E priceline.com, <laughs> which is another commercial that plays a lot. I try not to look at them so they don't see me doing it. And I don't want them to think I'm trying to get them to notice it. So I never see their faces, but I do see them turn and look at me. <laughs> it's really stupid. I don't know why I do it, but I love doing it. And as you can hear me, I'm laughing about it right now. I just think it's so funny. And <laughs> I think now is the perfect time to play this particular song by Mike Furman. I'll be back. Is for the eggs that you eat. C is for the kangaroo with bouncy feet. A is for the otter in the sea. N is for the bird up in the tree. And T is for the house made of sticks. S is for my favorite number, which is five. P is for tomato. And E is also for tomato. L, why not? It's for tomato. And one more L for that's the end. What's that spell? Another thing that I'm going to try to start doing with spring coming up is losing weight again. I fell off the wagon pretty hard, but I think where I went wrong was getting too healthy. I know that doesn't seem to make sense, but I put so much into getting healthy last year that it just wasn't realistic to keep up with it. I felt great, but once I started slipping, it made me feel really bad mentally and physically. And when I say I put a lot into it, I mean I would eat every four hours to keep my metabolism going, typically 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., 10 p.m., all with a very specific caloric range and made up of a certain amount of carbs, protein, and fat that I would keep track of. I'd limit my calories to 1,200 to 1,400 a day, which is very, very low. If I ate a grape, I made a note of it. I tracked it all on the Fitbit app, along with how many steps I took in a day, my sleep pattern, all that stuff. I worked out three days a week. I did cardio four days a week. I would stretch for 10 minutes twice a day, every day. I only drank water and two cups of coffee per day. I would get checked by my doctor to make sure things were going okay as far as my blood pressure, stuff like that, and kept up to date with what I was doing. There was so much more to it, but I think you get the point. <laughs> It was very strict and pretty extreme. This time, I'm just going to be working out and watch what I eat and uh, try to see how that goes. I'm sure it'll go just fine. I don't need to lose 20 pounds in six weeks like I did last time. And my sleep regimen is already extreme enough. I was going to talk about that on today's episode a little bit, but Darren Carter is going to be coming back on the podcast and he's part of the reason why I did one of the things that I've been doing, and I'm going to talk to him about that when he comes back. Another episode that's going to be coming up is the April Fool's Day episode. I'm going to try to get a lot of the people that I wanted to have at the podcast meetup on that episode. 
At the podcast meetup, I wanted to record two episodes of the podcast and a bonus stand-up show. So I may have the first two weeks of April be makeup shows for that and have a lot of those people on. One of the people I would like to have on is comedian and Swiss awareness activist Fran Kissling. I still need to ask her about it. But in the meantime, here's a tip from Fran on how to be more Swiss. The Swiss flag is a white cross on a red background. The worst thing about the Swiss flag, it gets mixed up with a red cross. People come to me with emergencies. I find CPR stressful because I'm not good at it. I hate it when people die and it's partially my fault. Since the podcast is coming out in the middle of the week, I won't be going over the strange days of the week, but I will be doing a segment that I've talked about for, I don't know, maybe the last three years. (laughs) At least it seems that way. It's only been a couple of weeks, but it's the honor roll. The honor roll is to give a monthly shout out to listeners who have went above and beyond. So here we go. Lone Wolf GAM on Instagram and Twitter for all the likes and shares on social media. Jake Hudson on Twitter at mushroom underscore Hudson for all the nice tweets. Chris Doyle for the fun fact factory segment and the likes on social media. Mike Seibert from Mike Seibert Radio and Jason Lampro from the Mixed Media Forest podcast. You guys are all awesome. I really appreciate your support. While I'm doing shout-outs, I want to give one to Choo Choo Stew. He's been on the show numerous times over the years, and his birthday was last Saturday. Stew, this song's for you. Once a year we celebrate with stupid hats and plastic plates The fact that you were able to make another trip around the sun <gasps> And the whole clan gathers round and gifts and laughter do abound And we let out a joyful sound and sing that stupid song Happy birthday! Now you're one year older Happy birthday! Your life still isn't over Happy birthday! You did not accomplish much But you didn't die this year, I guess that's good enough so let's drink to your fading health and hope you don't remind yourself Your chance of finding fame and wealth decrease with every year Does it feel like you're doing laps and eating food and taking naps And hoping that someday perhaps your life will hold some cheer Happy birthday! What have you done that matters? Happy birthday! You're starting to get fatter Happy birthday! It's downhill from now on Try not to remind yourself your best years are all gone If cryogenics were all free, then you could live like Walt Disney and live for all eternity inside a block of ice. But instead, your time is set. This is the only life you get. And though it hasn't ended yet, sometimes you wish it might. Happy birthday. You wish you had more money. Happy birthday. Your life's so sad, it's funny. Happy birthday. How much more can you take? But your friends are hungry, so just cut the stupid cake. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Stanley, Zipper, Good Frank, Skippy, the Bush Kangaroo. Uh, starts with when the weather is nice. Frankie McDonald will be back next week with the weather. Send in your questions for him. I'm going to be doing an episode of the show for his birthday next month, and I'll ask your questions on that episode. But that's it for this episode. I'll be back next week, hopefully on Monday, with a great special guest, the return of Frankie McDonald and Larry Woodstone from the Wood Enthusiast Podcast. I'll talk to you then. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you next time. Have you considered your neighbor may actually be Japanese?